That is amazing. The question I get asked the most often on this channel is what telescope should I buy? And for most people, their budget is less than $500. They want a telescope that can do everything and they also want to be able to capture what they see. This is the Seastar S50 and it is the complete package. It's perfect for both beginner and advanced astrophotographers like myself and it only costs $499. And in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing it. My name's Damon Scotting and this is astronomical. Okay, let's get straight into looking at what this tiny portable telescope can capture in our cosmos. So where do we point it first? I think I'm going to go for the Orion Nebula to kick things off. And that is located just there behind the clouds. Isn't that just absolutely freaking perfect? Now, if that is an astronomer's look, I don't know what is. Okay, change plan. We're going to go for a more difficult target then. I'm actually going to go straight up in the air, just up here for a target known as Messier Object 1, or better referred to as the Crab Nebula. We're actually going to be giving it a baptism of fire because it's going up against a very difficult to image object. You may have heard of the Crab Nebula before. It was a supernova remnant from 1054 AD. It's really cool. Um, and since we have been imaging this now for a very long time, what you can actually do with your images is you can now capture it and then compare your photos to photos taken 20, 30 years ago and see how much the supernova remnant has expanded since it was first imaged, which is really cool. I highly doubt we're going to be able to do that with this tiny little telescope. So let's see how it fares against the Crab Nebula. Oh, my legs. So after a total of 30 minutes worth of exposures, this is our final image of the Crab Nebula. I could have probably done a better job removing the magenta color from the core, but overall I'm very impressed by it. And as previously mentioned, here it is in a comparison with Hubble's image taken 18 years ago back in 2005. Notice the core filaments of the Crab Nebula and how they have expanded over time. With the help of the billion dollar Hubble telescope and our $499 sea star, we have captured the universe in motion. Go on, try and convince me that isn't the coolest thing ever. And from the death of an old star to the birth of countless new ones. Behind me right now, even though it is out of focus, just there is the Orion Nebula. It is one of the main objects that really captured my interest and imagination for this hobby. I'm sure the majority of us are familiar with the Orion Nebula already, but if not, here's a gentle reminder of its beautiful appearance. This image of the cellar nursery was also captured by Hubble, and it's probably not the best idea to be comparing images taken with a billion dollar telescope versus the Seastar S50. So instead, here's my setup from 10 years ago and an image I captured of the Orion Nebula with it. Collectively, the telescope, mount and camera, all purchased used, cost me $850, which was a very good deal. This is one of my favorite deep sky objects. What makes it especially incredible is the fact that it's so easy to image with just the most basic setups. This, I would class, is a more advanced setup, and it is capable of capturing the Orion Nebula in phenomenal detail. Don't believe me? Let's find out. Look at that. This telescope took that with just a few taps of my mobile device. That is incredible. I really do love this. It's fantastic. Right, one of the first things I should point out to start this video that you should know beforehand is that the Seastar S50 is kind of suffering from its own success in a sense that most of the retailers that would normally sell this telescope are currently out of stock because there's been such a high demand. You can still purchase the telescope directly through ZWO's website. I've attached a link directly to the product page for this telescope on their official website in the description below. I'll also pin it in a comment so you can find it very easily. Yeah, it's high in demand and with very good reason because what this is capable of will blow your mind. <laughs> this is such a weird angle because it looks like I'm just sort of standing on top of the camera and I'm sure that might seem quite daunting but um, how else am I supposed to get the stars and the night sky in the same shot as me? This is actually quite a rare shot from what I see in documentaries and on YouTube itself where you have the presenter talking to the camera as well as the stars in the background and for the love of God they are not just put in as a green screen. These aren't fake stars, These, <laughs> this is the real organic night sky. And I think that's very important. I've tried doing it myself where I've sort of put a fake night sky in behind me as 
as I'm talking. But then whenever I'm editing it or re-watching the clip back, I just get really angry at the fact that it's not real and it just looks so, so ugly. So the next target we're gonna be going for is the Horsehead Nebula, which is located in the belt of Orion on the leftmost star, Aln Attack, which is just over here. Again, it's a fairly commonly imaged target, but at the same time, it's not a very easy one to capture with your camera. Uh, it is a dark nebula, which is basically we're observing the sort of absence of light from this curtain of dust and gas that hides the birth of stars. But it is really pretty. Yeah, I'm going to try and see if I can actually frame in the flame nebula and the horsehead nebula to be in the same shot here, which would be a nice sort of composition as opposed to just getting one. Uh, yeah, so let's line this up and see if we can get both of them included in the same shot. The method in which the sea star captures the night sky is very impressive. It takes successive 10 second long exposures of the target and stacks them live in front of your eyes. And within the first minute or so, you can already make out some spectacular detail in your images that would otherwise be invisible to the naked eye. With 30 minutes total exposure time, we are able to create this. When using the app, you are provided with a wide variety of suggested targets, including those that are best suited for imaging tonight. You can of course point it anywhere you wish, but in this instance, I have a very specific target in mind. If you want to learn more about what you are imaging, then they have included some very useful information about the object. You are then presented with a sky atlas, which means you can watch as the telescope slews to the intended target and precisely aligns itself. This generally takes a minute or two, but after it's centered the object, all you have to do is tap the red capture button and let the photons do their work as they reveal more and more detail about these wonderful deep sky objects. After 15 minutes total exposure time, this is what I managed to produce. The imaging process is unbelievably easy. I managed to capture an extravagant selection of DSOs, ranging from star clusters to nebulae to galaxies and even planets. The onboard 64GB storage ensures there is plenty of room for your raw images to be saved. Once imaging is complete, Preview photos are downloaded onto your phone. This is how the image is turned out without any additional editing. The Smart Telescope overlays a very useful graphic that includes a timestamp, the name of the object, and the total exposure time. If you're like me, then you're going to want to bring out the best features in the image. The main adjustment I made was to sharpen the image, reduce the noise, and increase the contrast and saturation. The magnification is quite high, which means objects like the Andromeda Galaxy that I've captured here will require you to take multiple mosaic shots to include all of the galaxy itself. But how bloody special is that? This is a 17 minute exposure of the core of our nearest galactic neighbor. Amazing. Yeah, so it is now peak season for astrophotography. We are now entering into the period where we have the longest nights of the entire year, otherwise known as winter. Christmas is just around the corner, which means people are spending less time outdoors during the daytime and more time indoors thinking about what they can do for fun. And what could be more fun than standing outside in the freezing cold all night, looking up at the night sky? I'm not even joking by that statement. I think this is amazing. <laughs> Uh, behind me you can see some of the best features of our winter night skies and in fact that bright point of light just up there that is the largest planet in our solar system jupiter so it's not actually a star um, but it is a very wonderful sight to look through with a telescope i'm actually going to test the sea star s50 up against jupiter so yeah this is how jupiter looks through the sea star s50 telescope and as predicted you can't see any proper surface detail but you can see the planet and its moons itself which is really cool so it's not designed to look at the planets, but that's all right because the planets make up a very tiny portion of our night sky. And as for wonderful things that we can see, there are far more exciting wonders out there to be observed and better yet, captured with the telescope's built-in camera. But whilst we're still on the topic of talking about planets being imaged with this telescope, I just want to point out that Uranus is above my head. In between the seven sisters, oh, wrong hand. Okay, crikey, okay. That's right, in between the Seven Sisters and the planet Jupiter is Uranus, which is right above me, just there. Which I haven't actually done on purpose, but where better to be standing than looking up at Uranus? <sighs> Uranus, 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 you're an educator. Say Uranus, Uranus. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna test the telescope out on Uranus real quick and see how it fares against that. Uh, again, we're not looking to see any surface detail really. The main thing I wanna try and observe right now is whether or not we can see any of Uranus's moons, which would be really cool. So I'm just gonna open up the app 
I'm going to tap away and say, I want you to point at Uranus and it's going to take a minute or two to finally center itself and then start taking some photos. Yeah. I kept the exposure time for this shot down to two minutes as I could very quickly see on my live feed that it had captured what I was hoping for. Either side of Uranus, we can see one of its 27 moons. The ones we're looking at here are Oberon and Titania. Just to finish off talking about the solar system imaging capabilities of this telescope, it does include a solar filter, which enables you to capture the sun in white light, and I was very impressed with the clarity of the videos and photos I took. You can clearly identify a number of sunspots on the surface of the sun. Gosh, is there anything this telescope can't do? Okay, cool. We're making really good progress. Um, it's actually very easy to do astrophotography nowadays when you have a smart telescope like this because it does 70% of the work for you. The main thing you have to do is just figure out which target you want to actually explore. Now, I know a lot of old-time astrophotographers will take issue with this. They'll say that it's not real astrophotography. You're taking all of the fun out of astrophotography and the real experience. I get that. I understand where they're coming from because being out in the garden and looking up at the night sky and looking at it through your telescope and taking pictures, it's a very intimate experience, especially because for the majority of the time, we do it by ourselves. It's just us. So there's a lot of time to sort of contemplate certain aspects of it. Um, you feel a much deeper connection with the universe. I know that might sound silly to some people, but if you are an astrophotographer, you will understand what I mean. So using a smart telescope kind of removes certain elements of that because you're not going through all the rigorous effort to set it up and get it capturing the cosmos, which kind of sounds like you're just complaining about this making your life a lot easier, which it is, which is why I get where certain people are coming from with these comments, but at the same time, I don't necessarily agree with them myself because the fact that I can literally pitch this up in about two minutes and then connect it to my phone, go back inside and sit on my sofa drinking tea all night whilst I point it at different targets and edit the photos straight on my phone. That's so convenient and so easy and it's going to make astrophotography a million times more accessible to the rest of the population. So to summarize, what are the Seastar S50 telescope's best features? Right, so let's then go through an uh, overview of the best features that the Seastar has. So it weighs about three kilograms, which is 6.6 .6 pounds. It's able to not only find a target in the night sky, but also track it and take long exposure images that it then saves both to the 64 gigabyte storage on a telescope itself, no SD card required. I'd say one of the more impressive features that I've noticed from this telescope that stood out compared to the others is that it has a built-in anti-dew function and what that means is on cold nights like this glass of all materials is very susceptible to actually fogging up and dewing up and basically giving you a sort of blurred cloudy image that you can't really see because it's really obscured today all it has done in england is rain which isn't a shock to anyone that's what it does here but it does mean that we've got some nice crystal clear skies because it's basically removed almost all the clouds in our night sky which is great but also means it's very damp and cold yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's about six degrees Celsius. Yeah, it's not quite freezing, but it's getting there. It's one of those nights where you can kind of withstand being outside with your telescope observing the night sky, but you'd still much rather be inside with some cookies and a cup of tea. So alongside its best features, uh, as it is for any smart telescope, is the fact that you can control it solely from being inside your house, from the comfort of a much warmer environment. Okay, in terms of portability, it is still very portable. It comes with a foam case, carry case, which makes it super easy. Uh, it has an autofocus function on it. It allows you to adjust the actual focus that you're seeing in the night sky. So you can pinpoint it yourself or you can press the AF button. It has a built-in filter, a duo band filter, which allows you to bring out more of the nebulosity in certain deep sky objects. One of the best features has been the Sky Atlas. Like the fact that I can just tap the bottom right part of the phone here and then point it wherever I want in the night sky. Just find the field of view of the region and then press go to and it will take a minute or so to perfectly center that object. It's just phenomenal. It makes it so easy and I cannot overstate that. And the fact it even shows you the field of view that you're going to see with this telescope and the sort of built-in camera, that's incredibly handy because I'm always on Stellarium where I'm just trying to figure out what certain objects are going to look like when I go out to image it later on. But this is built-in, it already knows what the field of view is and it's going to tell you what you should see once you center it. In the top left it always has the word enhancing to let you know that it's actually enhancing your image every time in between exposures. What it's actually doing is in between shots it's Divering. Divering is where you move the sort of view of the telescope ever so slightly by just a few pixels will do the trick uh, and then start taking images again. So by moving around but still keeping the same sort of main target in the middle, you're going to generate a much cleaner and better signal to noise ratio with your actual overall resultant image. So it's very handy. I'm in the middle of making a video right now 
which is titled What You Can See With A $500 Telescope. And it's very hard to find a package that ticks all the boxes, but this right here does so. And for a beginner, it does not get any easier. You don't have to know anything about our night sky. You don't have to know that Orion's belt are those three stars just behind me, or that red star up just here. Hang on is Beetlejuice see I don't even know I can't even point in the right direction you don't need to know anything it's just it's all here on the mobile device for you tap on a sky atlas and you just pick your fan set and the fact that you can see these objects in the night sky on the actual phone is very handy because you get an idea of what it looks like so you can just cherry pick certain things that you think oh hey that looks nice I'd love to capture that let's see what that looks like for a telescope go to capture boom all of a sudden the images start coming up on your phone I think it's a wonderful experience and it's going to make astronomy and astrophotography accessible to thousands more people. So I'm all for it. I cannot support it any more than I actually currently do because I think this is incredible and it's just the beginning of what's to come. Yeah, I've got a lot of cool and weird projects in mind that I want to pursue with this. So the only thing that's prohibiting me from doing so right now is whether or not it stays clear for the foreseeable future. But living in England, clear nights are few and far between, unfortunately. So yeah, if you'd like to purchase a telescope for yourself, click the link in the description. It will direct you straight to the product page in which you can buy it. Like I said at the start, it's very hard to find one in stock at the moment because they're in such high demand. But by clicking the link that I've put in the description, you'll be redirected to the official webpage of ZWO and you can buy straight from the supplier itself. Perhaps you have a partner or friend or family member who's really interested in astrophotography or astronomy as a hobby itself, in which case depending on how much you love them I do believe that this would be the perfect gift to get them interested in the hobby. So yeah, phenomenal piece of kit. I absolutely adore it. I cannot speak highly enough of it. So if you want to learn more about it yourself, then click on the link down in the description below and let me know how you get on. I am actually very intrigued to see what other people can capture with this telescope. I am in bought with six skies at the moment, so it's not fantastic in terms of light pollution, which is to say that I'm probably not showcasing this to its full potential. It's still capable of a lot more. So stay tuned for other weird and wonderful projects that I pursue with this telescope and more. I'm Damon Scotting and this was astronomical.